picture this. The storm sweeps over the earth, sucking up words, letters, and syllables. All of these tumbling and confusion, clouds and alphabets. The drone of earthlings desperate to make sense of the word fragments drowns out all noise. Without print or speech, the world starts to shut down. People misunderstand one another. Violence breaks out everywhere, wiping out all but a few. For the survivors who can't read, it's the world before fire. Dark, lonely, and violent. An exaggeration? Maybe. But this turmoil goes on inside the millions who can't read. Forget statistics. Illiteracy is about people, survival, and public health. A few of us got together to make short films about our reading problems. This is my little film about uh, things I've learned and experienced, sort of through not being able to read very well. And I'd uh, draw a few pictures to maybe help you illustrate it and help you understand a little better. Hi. Um, my name is Andrew. I wanted to make this movie to help other kids that couldn't read. Can be when did you first suspect that Talia had a reading problem? Well, I would have to say uh, coming from school. I guess uh, the first picture is, is of school. Teachers, I don't think, sometimes mean to make fun of people who can't read well. And, and it really gets tough, really. I remember a lot of the times I just try to always take the back desk keep my head down, keep my hand down, and keep my mouth shut. The teacher's saying, well, there might be a problem here. She's not developing with the class. Because school is tough, and everyone's trying to look for a way to fit in. And anyone who doesn't at all really gets ripped to pieces. I had to read in front of the class. And I tried to read this really, really hard book. And I'm like saying weird kind of words. And they're following it with me. I like to play with my uh, What does it say? I can't read it. They're good and you can't read. Ha ha ha. They all started laughing and pointing and I, I after that day I had spots all over me. Cause I was depressed. I was had I used to say, I'm dumb, I'm not smart. I'd hit myself too. My brain would be like mm, mm, like twisted and twisted and it'd be spinning and spinning and spinning. I, I couldn't find, like, the button to stop it. Some people don't want to be laughed at. And they just sort to decide that maybe the human race isn't such a great thing after all. I had trouble reading. It was scary. I couldn't read anything. And, and they don't want to be sort of talked to or associated with. It made me want to run away from home. Chris, Mom said you can read this if you try. Come on, I want to have the story. Read this. What to say here, Chris? I don't like this book. Why is it too hard for you? No. I try to um read, but I'd get frustrated. I would just keep on throwing the books around and throw tantrums. Sometimes I'd help him hide just because I understood how he felt reading and the frustration with him crying. So he'd hide and my dad would look for him and we'd end up finding him. He just, I don't know, he just didn't really want to read. And sometimes it's funny because he could, he could get out of reading by hiding. Never again, never again, never again. I think every person who can't read or read well has, has done an isolation phase. Because again, it's just easier not to deal with it and just to disappear. So much rage, so much hate, that you just need to lash out and strike something. The problems with Joe not learning how to read didn't end at school. When he came home, um, there were times all throughout the afternoon and the evening that were frustrating for him and for the rest of us. That you're asking if you're the single player, so your single player is left out. Okay, now what? What does it say? Just tell me, what does it say? He was expected to read certain things, and he couldn't do it. And he expected to be able to read certain things, and he couldn't do it. So there was constant tension in the family. It made me get angry, me, you know, do my little tantrums and kind of be angry, violent, I guess. And it was just hard. That was the stressful part. That was the frustrating part. Having problems with reading is bigger than just not being able to read. 
I just can't read it. It has a much bigger effect on the child, uh, on their self-esteem, and the way they feel about themselves. I became the tough guy, the goon, the brute, punk rocker, the scary guy that walks down the halls. You look tough, you dress tough, because you want to be left alone, but you still want to sort of be seen. You don't want to disappear. But you definitely, over all things, don't want anyone to laugh at you. Once someone laughs at you, you got to beat them up. And uh, you got to beat them up pretty darn bad so uh, no one else will laugh at you. What have we seen so far? School's a nightmare, agitated families, kids thinking they're rejects, hiding, fighting. This isn't healthy. But we get help. It has to do with the brain processing letters and sounds, instruction to help this process. Once we realize that letters have sounds, oh, darn it, I lost my place, I'm sorry. Once we realize, Duke, okay, do you want me to just keep going? Yeah. Words have letters and letters have sounds. Our brains put it all together. We break the code of language and reading. We read, our outlook changes. We're happy or we used to be mad. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, sometimes um, these kids like Daquan are kind of put off and considered um, that they have this mysterious learning disability when, when in actuality they just need to be tutored um, consistently and um, in a program. Down and try to read. With you would sit down and try? With my cousin. And you would try to read with her? Yeah. And and could you do that, or was it really too difficult for you? Difficult. Difficult? Yeah. Now it's not difficult, now it's fun. Now it's fun. <laughs> Did you enjoy tutoring? It was the best. Ready? Go. Can bake like two? Here's your first word. You decide which vowel it goes in. Claw, leak, mm, mm, draft. Okay, I'm just saying, hear all the sounds in. Teach. Seaweed, Sunday. How would you say that? Hi, Constantine. That's right, tile. So I put it on my knees, I'll put it What kind of soul is it? Um, Post. All right, make it open. Clive, sleep. What? James, do you hear? Oh, it's an O, it's an O. Excellent, now we're here. Ah, uh, sheep. His ears do. What kind of soul is that one? Open. Sheep, soap. And his tail boot. Okay, so what's the difference between closed and open soul? There's not a consonant at the end, and there's a consonant at the end. Very good. Oh, oh. Light tea. Woo! High five. Well, what's the situation today? He's more just acceptable. He's more uh, just open-minded about everything. So we get along better. And now he gets along better with everybody else because he's not as angry or not as frustrated. In a grocery store, she'll say, we got to buy one because we can get one free. When she's playing piano, she's singing because she can s read the words. When she's in the car, she tells us where we are. And uh, she's much more social. It's got an adjustable shoulder strap, dual nozzle settings, and a constant pressure system. Did he read that? He was capable of learning how to read. How do you feel now, Spot? Just like everybody else. Yes. Oh, yeah. She's got a confidence and self-esteem level that she didn't have before. And to see her now with a smile on her face and a smile in her heart. I can read much better now, and my life is so much better because of it. 
and I'm really happy that I can. This is the true story about a very brave dog. His name was Balto. The year was 1925. Balto lived in Nome, Alaska. Nome was a frontier town most of the year. It was buried under ice and snow. In winter, there was no way to travel through all the ice, that ice. bus or cars, the only way to travel in Alaska was by dogs. So. 